This video is brought to you by Flower Magazine. See the description of this video to subscribe now and receive six copies each year for more beautiful interior design, flowers, and gardens. Hello, I'm Lewis Miller with Lewis Miller Design. I am so happy to be here in Birmingham at Margot's house, and I've got these amazing flowers, gorgeous dahlias from down the street, local dahlias, and some cuttings from the garden that I cut this morning. I just brought this uh, ceramic jug in from the house, out from the house, and I chose this vessel because it's got a nice sturdy weight to it. It's opaque, which tends to be my favorite style of vessel, which meaning you're not seeing the water inside, so you don't see the water as it turns brown. You don't see the stems and stuff. Um, and it's just a good weight to counterbalance the size of these dahlias, which have some major heft to them. So these are incredible, and I'm so happy to be using them. We've got this amazing array of color going from yellow to orange and peachy coral to cerise and ruby and dark, dark, burgundy red. Um, I've got some really beautiful camellia here. It just looks like it's the beginning of the camellia blooming. It's this uh, pretty pink miniature camellia, which is a treat for me being from New York. We don't have this. And some abelia cuttings, some Russian sage. Um, I'm going to start by filling this with water. I state the obvious, but you would be surprised. Um, I am not going to tape this or put a flower frog it's deep enough that I don't feel like I need to, um, but I will once I fill this to the top. This is just clean room temperature water. You can put a little flower food in here. You can put a few drops of bleach. That helps cut the bacteria. Sometimes a splash of vodka works if there's no bleach. Um, I've never really used the aspirin trick, um, but I really think that a clean base, clean water, room temperature, is about the best thing you can do. I'm filling it up about two fingers from the top. Almost there. Okay, so in lieu of tape or a flower frog, I got some more small leaf camellia here. This stuff is really stocky and bushy. And you can do this, what I'm gonna do, you can do this with boxwood or any sort of dense evergreen um, leafy foliage. And I'm just gonna cut some short pieces. This is not meant to be seen. This is literally gonna just give me a foundation and create the beginnings of a floral network. I'm just stripping off the leaves and just putting them in, making sure they go all the way to the bottom. And this, like I said, is really gonna be more or less kind of a mattress. You're not, you're not gonna see these flowers. Um, it just starts to fill up some of the bulk that this this is a wide vase so it could really eat up the flowers fast um, and just creates the first layer sort of like building a house you start with the cinder blocks and the foundation and the stuff that's not so pretty and nobody necessarily needs to see it and then you build up from there so just really whacking this piece of camellia down i am making sure that there are no leaves inside the actual water because those leaves and all those bits and bobs will disintegrate and contributes to the flower's uh, lifespan being shortened. So even pieces that aren't so good looking like this, doesn't matter, just get it in there. Now I'm working on a Lazy Susan so I can spin this around. I'm keeping things a little more symmetrical to begin with. I can play around with the shape as I, as the arrangement progresses. Just gonna get a little bit, now I'm gonna actually layer in with some of this um, camellia that's got the blooms on it. I like the drape and I wanna soften some of these edges. So now I can just weave these pieces in here. And I'm really trying to create <clears throat> a network of stems because it helps to um, keep everything in place. And some of this is so nice. So I'm just going to, again, cut it down, strip it down, follow, because this has a heavy blossom on it, I'm gonna let that drape do its thing. So just really work that in there and let that fall over like that. Even some of these pieces that don't have blooms are nice. <clears throat> I like, I call this just kind of finishing off my edges. Um, 
I work around the perimeter of the container and then I will start to build in. So I will do the same thing on this side. Now here's a piece that's a little bit more vertical, so let's just see if I can have that be a little more upright. It's going to shift and move around a little bit as this arrangement um, takes shape, but that's okay. Don't try to force anything. You know, you really need to work with the natural movement of the flower and what it's actually doing. So now I have a pretty good foundation here. I'm going to keep going with a few more greens and textures just to fill in some of these holes before I start layering on the beauty. So I've got this Russian sage. Again, I'm just stripping it a quick strip and I sharp cut and I can sink some of that in actually a little bit lower to fill in some of these middle spaces. This has a nice kind of an herbal texture. I like this contrast of the fuzzy leaves with the shiny. It just gives it some interest. And this again can kind of spill over. One of my tricks is <clears throat> it's very easy to make these arrangements and you're literally like right on top of it and you forget to see the arrangement as it's actually going to be seen. So take a, take a step back and I'm a squinter. I like to squint and start to see um, by squinting, you can kind of see the outline of your shape and the silhouette. Um, don't overthink every single placement. This, that can be the death of flower arrangement. It can take something that's quite enjoyable and turn it into really an unpleasant chore. So go with it. I do like to pretend this is something that I think is kind of important. <clears throat> In a container like this or any vessel, I like to pretend that I have a central access point. So let me just take a stem like this, for example. Now, if you look at the way a tree grows or a plant grows, it comes up from a trunk and everything radiates from that point. Same sort of thing. Just pretend like that the center of your container is a central access point and all of the placement of your foliage and flowers is coming out from that area. It keeps it a more natural looking. It keeps it more um, aesthetically pleasing from all sides. Then you don't have like weird crisscrossing things. Now, having said that, occasionally I'd throw a vine over it or do some weird crisscrossing things, but that's very intentional and that's kind of at the last minute. Okay, so let's get to the fun stuff. Let me actually start with the dahlias. So I've got these incredible dahlias some really pretty corals and oranges. This has an amazing streaky quality to it. There's a lot of color here and I don't necessarily want to embrace the entire rainbow in this arrangement. So I think that I'm going to not use the yellow. I could either go oranges and corals and yellow and not necessarily use the reds and pinks, or I could go corals and oranges and start to embrace the sort of cerise and cherry colors and the pinks. I'm going to go that direction because I already have started with some lavender and pink in here. What I find fun about flowers is that you can really create a color scheme by looking at the actual flower. Like this dahlia right here has, it's an orange base with these amazing streaks like that look like paintbrush streaks of a darker red. So that really incorporates these other colors. This one here has yellow in the base, so that ties in nicely with there, with, with the yellow tones. Um, and then some of these, even these kind of coral, start to tint a little bit purple pink and they look so beautiful together. So I'm gonna start, this is the fun part, is like where do we begin? Um, I'm gonna get a couple of large dahlias in deep. And these guys are the largest, so I'm gonna nestle them in there and then some of these other more interesting shapes can radiate from there. So when you're working with flowers, again, take most of the leaves off. You want to do a sharp cut at a 45 degree angle. Now, always err a little bit on the longer side because you can always cut a stem and make it shorter. It's very hard to, to make a long stem, a short stem longer. So sharp cut, get it in there. Now there's a lot in my vase already, but there's still plenty of space. And I like the stems to go to the bottom of the vase. And the reason for that is, as these flowers drink, and they tend to be heavy drinkers, this water level goes down. And since you're using an opaque vase, you're not necessarily seeing that water level go down. And lo and behold, two days later, the water's down here and your stems are way up at the top. This flower is not getting water. So they all have a better chance for life if all the stems go directly to the very bottom of the container. All right, so I'm gonna get 
couple of these in. I'll fill in both sides already. It's like looking pretty good. And I will start to tuck in this really amazing ultraviolet plum color and pair with some of the pinks. So I'm kind of at this point, like I said, I'm trying to work around, but I'm kind of filling in the gaps. I can then start to pull in some of these stronger colors. Layering them, you want things to feel kind of loosely packed. You don't want your flowers to feel scrunched or really packed together, but you do want them to be close enough that you can enjoy the textures together. And it has this feeling like everything has space to sort of open up and do its thing. Le uh, levels, you're gonna have high and low. You're gonna have some tucked in lower so that you can see them in deeper. You're gonna have some a little bit higher. It's very helpful to have this Lazy Susan just to spin around and work on your, your overall shape and form. Stepping back every once in a while, taking a look. Got a big hole here in the middle. I'll cluster that little starburst dahlia right there. Ooh, this peach one is glorious. Filling out my edges. Nestling them in there every once in a while. I like to just go in and you can just take your hands and go underneath the arrangement and just give it a little of a tickle, a little boost. This just has, lets everything sort of shift and adjust a little bit so that it just falls into place and makes for a more natural looking arrangement. Cause it's very easy to just like, to have this tendency to want to pack things in tight. And just by giving that little bit of a um, jostle, it helps it out. I'm just gonna keep going on and I can start to build things up a little taller because it's a little low right now. It's just, okay, it's getting a little tight in there, but it's a nice network of stems and as, as sort of chaotic and beautiful and messy and lush as this is, I know that what's happening underneath the water level is very clean. It's just a nice network of clean stems. So on these dahlias, you'll often have these leaf nodes like this. It's good to take your cutters and just clean them and cut them very, very close and very tight. The reason being is that if you take this flower and you put this in and these leaf nodes still have these little uh, barb sticking out, but then you decide you don't want that flower there and you pull it out, that thing acts like a gripper and it pulls everything else out with it. So nice smooth stems are sort of um, a little trick to keep things a little bit easier. Okay, oh, I got this beauty. This um, coral yellow with the little purple in there looks so good with these colors. I'll just nestle that by his little friend there. All right, I've got a nice, very colorful pink one that looks like it should go right about there. Don't be afraid to take things out and move them. It's like you're not working in wet concrete. Things can be moved and shifted. There's no problem with taking the whole thing apart and trying it all over again if you need to. Okay, last, I'm gonna add these really deep burgundy. I like the richness of these. It just helps to um, cut some of the sweetness and adds a little bit more of an autumn quality to it. And then I'm gonna finish off with a few more berries and textures and we're good to go. This one can be a little bit taller. All right, so I found some berries. It's really, I love having different textures in my arrangements. So these are Nandina berries. This was, there's one of these in the whole garden. So I hope that Margo doesn't mind. I took them. These would be in about a month, turn brilliant, brilliant red right now. They're green, starting to tinge a little bit plum. So let's just have those cascade over the edge. That seems to be a good spot right there. 
okay? And then I have these amazing um, Beautyberry Caliocarpus. So these gorgeous things, and they dry really nicely, they actually come off of the bush like this, where there's a lot of leaves. So <clears throat> I like to take a stem like this and take all of these leaves off and I believe Constant Spry used to call this skeletonizing, and the idea being that you, you're creating the skeleton of this branch, and that actually leaves you with a branch without leaves, but you can then see the berries. The leaves are pretty, but they're kind of messy, and they obstruct what's actually really quite special about this, and that's that amazing kind of bright violet berry. So I'm going to just tuck these in for some great texture. Some can fall over the edge. So pretty. They, uh, this purple picks up the color in this, um, I'm gonna go a little lower with this. The color of this purple with the streaks in this dahlia is really, really lovely. And since these are pretty special, I want to use all of them. Some of these stockier ones can go in tight. Just filling all the way around. Paying attention to the underside, making sure that the edge of the container is finished off with a soft draping of leaves or something. You can go a little taller with this one. All right, I think I'm almost done. I have a little bit more of this beautiful pink camellia. I don't want to let it go to waste, so I'm going to be sure to use it up. And then at some point you got to learn to just stick a fork in it and call it a day. So I actually have a little bit of a hole here in the middle, so I'm going to take this piece, strip the leaves, and cluster this in tight right here. That fills in that gap. And then stepping back, seeing where I could use something to soften there. So that looks like the ideal place for this last piece of camellia. All right, so I'm gonna call it quits. I could fuss with these all day. Point being, have fun, take greenery from the garden, enjoy beautiful local flowers. It's such a treat. Keep these. Um, in your house sort of away from vents and direct sunlight and you should get a good four, five, six days out of it.